is the way of life that trouble finds some people. Give me our weapons. Come and get them. Sometimes less for other people. Safe house, my ass. But this character, John McClane, just, I think it's really, he's just attracted to it. A fucking vacation! Of course, now is you know. I think the storyline in this one, there's there's a bit of, of weight to it, you know, with his son being in a situation that seems a little dangerous and, and stuff like that. So it's an interesting new dynamic to kind of you know experience. Try not to make an even bigger mess of things. We get pitched Die Hard stories. Everybody says, oh, it's going to be Die Hard in X Y Z, and they think that's the sort of formula of you know trap him in a box. That's what you always hear a lot. Of. Bang! Bruce jokes that, like Die Hard in a Delicatessen or, you know. Welcome to Moscow. The first film was a very claustrophobic, kind of contained story in a building that I was I was kind of trapped in. I promise I will never even think about going up in a tall building again. Since then, the Die Hard series has kind of gone outside that closely claustrophobic tight space to go out into the snow sometimes, to go to New York, and in this case, to, to Moscow. Protests in the center of Moscow followed a day of demonstrations in Russia. The funny thing is, the first time I read the script, the most exciting thing to me was, wow, John McClane's finally out of the United States. Like, how would John McClane apply his skills out of the country? And, and the idea that it all took place in Moscow was really exciting. We wanted an environment that sort of was big visually, that had a lot of stuff that we hadn't seen before, that was dangerous, or at least had the, the sort of hint of danger or of a very sort of trapped environment if the police and everybody turned against you, that it would be very difficult for John McClane to get out of, and Moscow fit the bill for all of those things. And also it's a place that John McClane cannot call and ask for help so readily. Get out of the car! He's stuck in this environment, and the only person he can really turn to for help is his estranged son, and that puts a real pressure on the two of them to find their common ground, to sort of depend on each other for years of having not spoken, and that was also a great opportunity. It's John McClain, it's Bruce Willis, you know, it's been fun to be a part of that. It's the most exciting thing about coming on board a movie like this is like, holy shit, it's, it's John McClain, it's Bruce Willis, and that's been a real, a real blast. Yeah! We actually did say, okay, but it has to feel authentic. Die Hard's always felt real, you know, it's, it's been fun, and John McClain says fun stuff. What is this, a pirate gun? But it's never glib, it's never phony, it's not like sort of Hollywood BS, it feels authentic. Action! So it was a real nice sort of combination of a real important mission that Jack McClane could be up to, that his father comes in misunderstanding and steps in the middle of. Shuttle! What the hell are those goddamn grenades? Die Hard and what makes it Die Hard. I don't think it's John McClane stuck in a box. I think it's a family movie, first and foremost, about him fighting for somebody he truly cares about. But second of all, I think it's John McClane as the uninvited party guest. I think that's the real fun of this. Are you crazy? Yeah, a little bit. And usually he's the uninvited party guest to a villain's very elaborate plan, and he's the unforeseen element. It's about money. When's it not about money? And here, you know, a slight uh, evolution of that, he's, he's the uninvited party guest to his son's plan. Who do, you, who do you think you're talking to? The last person I want to see. Well, maybe you missed the whole part back there where I saved you and Papa Geppetto here from a whole bunch of Russian bad guys. Bruce Willis, he's so charismatic. He's fantastically charismatic. He's mimic and he, you can't stop looking at him. Come on! He knows how old we are, no? Look, look old. Yeah, it's, it's kind of strange because it, it's, a, it's a sort of superhero and you know him from the big screen and all of a sudden it's just a man you know, stands in front of you. I just thought that working all the time was a, a good thing, you know? Bruce really brings an authenticity and a depth to John McClane. John McClane isn't perfect. John McClane is absolutely flawed like we all are. Come and get him! Fucker. Nah, I can't say it with a straight face. I don't know if the character is that much more mature as a human being. I'm certainly more mature in age. He still has issues he just can't seem to overcome. We go out to cheap pep and do our thing. Our thing? Yeah. Go out there and kill all the scumbags. 
Bruce portrays that so wonderfully. He, he makes us see the real man underneath the very heroic things he does. He's just, the character is stubborn, just a hardhead, and uh, just want, wants things done his way, and his way or the highway, my way or the highway. I'm far more reasonable than that. My character on screen is allowed to hit people. Do you think I understand a word you say? If somebody says the wrong thing, he's gonna let him have it. Shit we do for our kids. Hippie guy, motherfucker. That's John McClane. He gets under your skin. He's annoying. And yet, he's the guy for most guys who you'd want to be. There are all these great guys that are wish fulfillment of James Bond and Indiana Jones and Han Solo and like great iconic characters. Don't get me wrong, Batman, all the all the great ones. That it's not a ding against them, but John McClane lives in our world and he experiences our problems and yet he keeps enduring and coming through and is pretty funny and is pretty cool and I think that's what guys look at and is like, you know, I wish I could just be that guy. You know, I'll never get to be James Bond. I, I think I could be John McClane and, and Bruce just embodies that beautifully. I'm your father. Have some respect for your father. I don't know what the future is. This story kind of stands alone and we'll see where it ends up. I don't know if there's a passing on the tour chip, but at some point I won't bounce off the pavement as well as I, I do now, so. Let me ask you something. You're looking for trouble or does it always just seem to find you? You know, after all these years, I still ask myself the same question. Cut! Cut!